Welcome to Age of Noob, everyone. Let's take a closer look at one of the newly announced civilizations, the Ottomans. In case you missed it, the Ottomans and the Malians are two new civilizations that will be available to play for free in October. And today, we're looking at everything we know so far on the Ottomans. I upscaled and interpolated the trailer footage as well, so we can zoom in and slow down to take a closer, quality look at the units. I will also cover what's officially on the website, as well as uncover additional details by zooming in on the footage for you folks, so be sure to stick around until the very end. Okay, without further ado, let's dive right in. The description on the official Age of Empires website for the Ottomans reads as, The Ottoman civilization benefits strongly from their military prowess, their imperial council system, as well as their unique military school system. In Age of Empires IV, the civilization of the Ottomans spans from the 11th century to the mid-16th century. Originating in Anatolia, the Ottomans rose to become one of the longest-lasting empires in history with its effective and stable government supported by famously well-trained and regimented military. The Ottoman civilization is heavily dependent on their military expertise, gaining the upper hand in the battle with production bonuses and the largest gunpowder siege units available. The Ottomans can appoint powerful viziers to their imperial council which give them access to nine unique technologies. Each vizier is earned over time by increasing production, and strategic decisions must be made when choosing which technologies to unlock. Their unique military school system changes how military units are produced and even allows certain military units to be produced without cost. This unique system allows the Ottomans to have a larger army than is typical amongst other civilizations. Now, we don't know what those nine technologies are, but it seems like a system that is a mix between the House of Wisdom for the Abbasids and the Mosques for the Delhi Sultanate. We do not have any other information regarding this unfortunately. Regarding the unique units for the Ottomans, we of course get to see their bombards in action. In Age of Empires 2, the gunpowder prowess for the Ottomans were translated to only a range difference. Granted, plus 2 range is very significant, but it was underwhelming given that the Turk bombard cannons actually do less damage than other civilizations with siege engineering. Well, even though we don't know the stats of these beasts yet in Age of Empires 4, take a look at the size difference between the Great Bombard and a generic one. They are absolutely massive, so kudos to the developers for designing a very menacing look that pays homage to its real-life examples, as they really were massive in real life as well. Most famously used against the Great Walls of Constantinople, its description reads as, The Great Bombard is the most dominant siege weapon available across the many civilizations, making easy work of enemy walls and keeps with its nearly 1,000 pound splash damage causing projectile. While powerful, it is more likely than other siege units to be destroyed if not properly defended, inflicting a heavy economic loss. Based on this description, it'll be interesting to see how the splash damage works against enemy units and not just walls, as I feel like they will be oppressive on the battlefield. Again, without knowing its actual cost, movement speed, training time, and so on, we can only speculate its power for the time being. From its description, it seems like a high-risk, high-reward unit, in which you'll have to have them well defended. Next up is the Mehter, which will require some micro from the players. The Mehter is a unique horseback war drummer unit that provides an aura buff to units around it. This buff can be attack speed, melee armor, or ranged armor. While only one buff can be applied at a time, it's possible to switch between them after a short cooldown. Hence, great Ottoman players will likely be able to shift focus based on what type of engagement they are taking, which is a great avenue for skill expression. It's great that the unit is on horseback as well to ensure its viability on the battlefield. And finally, the famous Sipahi. In Age of Empires 2, Sipahi is peculiarly a unique technology that buffs cavalry archers when, in fact, the Sipahi were light cavalry in high numbers with devastating charges. It's great to see that Age of Empires 4 takes a more accurate angle this time around as their description reads, Quick pause. I did some fact checking after my initial voiceover and it turns out that there were multiple types of Sipahis, as they were not exclusive melee light to medium cavalry. Apparently, there were Sipahis that were akin to horse archers and even those who did both. Hence, I do take back what I said about Age of Empires 2, as I was incorrect in my initial statements that inferred that the Sipahis never used the bow and arrow. Okay, with that said, let's get back into the video. The Sipahi is a fearless, light raider horseman unit who charges into the battle with vigor. Their fortitude ability when activated causes increased attack strength for a short period of time at the cost of receiving increased damage from melee attacks. Yet another micro potential and decision making angle for the Ottomans, and it will be interesting to see how a combination of fortitude with the defensive Mehter buff will play out. The Ottomans, of course, get their famous Janissaries as well, even though it's not listed on the website separately as a unique unit for some reason. All we know is that they will be available in the Castle Age onward, and they are the Ottoman unique hand cannoneers. This is very similar to AOE2's implementation of Janissaries, but they don't see much action in open maps due to them being trained in castles. In Age of Empires 4, it seems like they will be trained through either the military school or the archer range, or both, so get ready to face some very powerful units in the Castle Age. 
As mentioned before, there is more information in the footage that is not covered on the website, and I will cover that towards the end, so be sure to stick around for that. The final piece of info we get from the website is further information on how the Ottomans will play out throughout the ages. In the Dark Age, the Ottomans are able to construct the military school, a civilization unique structure. Military schools produce units for free, at a much slower rate than normal. You can select which type of barracks, stables, or archery range units to produce, and the military school will continually produce them over time. While this may sound too powerful, we don't know any other details of the military school just yet. It kind of sounds like a take on the Dev Shirme policy of the Ottomans, which allowed them to have a continuously standing army for a long time. Just like the Delhi researching all technologies for free, the military school will likely have a similar balancing mechanic. But it also means that the Ottomans will likely be able to pressure from age 1 to buy time for themselves to get to the later ages and into their powerful units. In the feudal age, the Ottomans accelerate their economy by choosing a landmark which either helps to increase food or gold production. The Ottomans can start producing the Sipahi unit and the Mehter unit, providing early military prowess to help the Ottomans power through to later ages. While they are not explicit on this, it seems like the feudal age landmarks for the Ottomans will be based on economy efficiency and trade. Also, it will be interesting to see the interaction between the Sipahis against other early mounted units, such as the French knights. If they can shock attack and retreat, they could gain map control over the French or Rus players. As always though, you'll likely make Spearman to defend against Sipahis just like you would against French knights in the Feudal Age. In the Castle Age, the Ottomans can start producing siege weapons through the Tophane Armory Landmark, or help extend their empire with strategic options from the Imperial Council system. The unique Janissar unit, the Ottoman civilization-specific hand cannoneer, also becomes available. Depending on the balance of course, this seems like most players would opt for the Tophane Armory Landmark to push in the Castle Age, but we'll have to wait and see how the Imperial Council system works first. And finally, in the Imperial Age, the Ottomans are in full production to fuel their military force. And with their landmark choices, the player has either increased unit production speed or faster traders. With even more resources at their disposal, the Ottoman army can dominate the field and flatten enemy towns with the greatest siege engine of its time, the Great Bombard. Given how usually unpopular traders are in the current meta, I feel like most players will opt for the increased unit production speed to overwhelm their opponents. It seems like the Ottoman identity in Age of Empires 4 is surviving till the late game to field your devastating army composition. I'm really excited to see how the trio of Janissaries, Sipahis, and the Great Bombards will play with the help of the Mehter. We also are yet to know how the Viziers play into this mix, so stay tuned as we get more information. Okay, now that we've covered what's officially available, let's look at the trailer scene by scene to uncover more information. In the first scene, we can see that the Ottomans have access to the Rebaldequin as well as the Springles of course. We can also see their Archer line as well as what seems to be the Man at Arms line as well. I'm also going to presume that the lightly colored and more armored mounted units are the Knight line for the Ottomans as well, as they yield the same lance as the other Knight lines. And of course, you can just see how massive the Great Bombards look in comparison to the other units. Awesome stuff. In the next scene, we can see the Great Bombard shooting into the enemy archers and hand cannons, yet those units look rather unfazed. Obviously, this could just be for show, so we'll need to see how much splash damage they do in-game. They also showcase some Ottoman ships that look unique, but more on this later. Also, and I just have to say this, but I have no idea why they always choose to show literally the worst assets, lighting, and angles for water scenes. It just looks awful. Why can't they just use something similar in their marketing material to what I use in my videos to showcase the game, just like some of the scenes I'm showing you right now? This I will never understand. Anyway, rant over, so let's get back to the trailer. In one of the Mehtar scenes, we also see the usual crossbows available for the Ottomans as well. But more importantly, and this is something I feel most people have missed, the Ottomans will have access to the horse archer unit as well. Since the horse archer isn't technically a unique unit for the Rus, it seems like they will share them with the Ottomans. Another quick interjection. Given that I've shared that the Sipahi had multiple versions who did use the bow and arrow and sometimes even in conjunction with the lance, there has been some speculation that these are the Sipahis instead, and that a unique technology in the Imperial Council would allow them to switch between the lance and the bow and arrow. That said, no such thing is mentioned in the unit description on the website, so I'll still go with the horse archer theory. Regardless, the Ottomans will get a mounted archer unit, be it a version of the Sipahi or the horse archers themselves. Also, I have no idea why the horse is covered with what looks like a bear or wolf, but I suppose it helps with the Ottoman unit clarity. So yeah, this basically means that the Ottomans will have the archer, the crossbow, the janissary, and the horse archer as ranged units to field. Regarding water units, we do get a glimpse of one of the unique looking Ottoman ships, in which it shoots a cannonball head-on towards buildings. Again, we know that water gameplay overhaul is coming, so we'll have to wait and see. And finally, we get a quick glimpse of what seems to be the Ottoman wonder. Now, it could be a landmark too, so we don't know yet, but it's modeled based on some of the famous Istanbul mosques, namely the Sultanahmet Mosque and the Yeni Mosque. For fun, here's a photo that I took myself way back in 2016 of Yeni Mosque from the inside. 
We also see other smaller mosques next to it, which are presumably the same as Delhi's mosques. The units around them seem to be typical imams, but they could be viziers as well for all we know. To mention one final thing, we do see a unique looking building in the corner as well, and my guess is that this has to do with the Imperial Council of some sorts, but it's purely speculation for now. I did originally plan to end the video here, but today we get to see some new footage and additional information from the Xbox event that was not released two days ago. I tried to restore the quality as much as possible, but I can only work with the quality they provided unfortunately, so bear with me as I zoom into the new footage. First, let me quickly share a snippet from Bert himself, giving more insight on the Ottomans, followed by a quick analysis of the newly released footage today. One completely novel thing that yeah. the Ottomans have, and it's the Imperial Council. Oh, okay. And that will play a big, big part into your strategies and how you kind of play the, the Ottoman sure, civilization. Yeah. The Imperial Council is kind of, as you build your empire, no matter how, like researching technologies, going to the next age, yeah. training units, you get uh, viziers sure, that, that yeah. look at your empire and say like, this has my approval, <laughs> I shall yes. grant my uh -huh. services to you. And those viziers can then say, okay, I'm gonna give you tactical advantages. Like, hey, I'm gonna make sure that you can conscript some janissaries from the town centers mm -hmm. and you can use those to your advantage in your next attack. Oh, okay. So it's really like you have to pick like, do I go for something more military, go something more economical, yeah. something more building up, a lot of options there. Regarding the new footage, we get a quick view of the Ottoman Dark Age town, with a unique looking town center as well as the military school in action. We also get to see the Ottoman spear units for the first time as well. We see another shot of the Sipahis galloping over the hills, and another town shot where we get to see the blacksmith and the mosque. So far, nothing out of the ordinary. That said, we do see this rather unique looking structure that is most likely a feudal age landmark that is built right next to the berries. This loosely confirms that this is the landmark to accelerate food production in the feudal age and the other building that looks kind of like a market as the landmark to accelerate gold production. Next, we see another shot of the market, archer range and stable, and another shot of the dock and some of their cannon ships in action. We also do get to see an extended shot of a previous scene in which we see this awesome looking structure that is likely a defensive landmark of some sort. We also see another unique building, but I have no idea what this is, presumably another landmark. We also get to see presumably the economic landmark right next to the castle, as well as a structure with a tower or minaret next to it. For the final scenes, we see new engagement scenes of the Janissaries, Sipahis and Mehters in action against their opponents. This basically wraps up every ounce of information that they have released on the Ottomans in the past few days. Well, that's all you need to know about the Ottomans so far for Age of Empires 4. Stay tuned for tomorrow's in-depth dive for the Malians, so be sure to like and subscribe to Age of Noob to not miss out. As a reminder, Age of Empires 4 is free to play right now and has steep discounts depending on your region, so be sure to check it out on Steam. Once we do have the public update preview available for us, I'll cover all other things for both the Ottomans and the Malians. As always, thanks for watching everyone, come back tomorrow for the Malians review and see you all in the next one.